Hey everybody, I got a special treat for you Dungeons & Dragons fans. This is a bunch of artwork from Dungeons & Dragons history from their 70s all the way till now. And the title of it's called Arson Arcana, A Visual History. It also includes a bunch of extra items in here. Let's do an unboxing and see what's in this big box of goodies. So let's uh, cut open this uh, the plastic here. see what's in the box yeah I'm a huge fan of if you look at my social media accounts I play a lot of d and I, I actually used to play a lot when I was a kid but I just got back into it recently and I pre-ordered this I saw that they actually were, were uh, compiling all their artwork from all their games the books the novels and, and all their old modules and adventures and, and the game books and I decided wow this is an opportunity I can't miss so here's the the whole the box for it hey, how do you open this thing oh it's like a it's like a well that's pretty cool I guess you open the other way Let's take a look what's in here first. Ah, look at that. I remember now. It comes with the... I think the first version of the Tomb of Horrors module. Yeah, this is a tournament edition that's not... This has never been released outside the tournament in 1975. Basically, a Tomb of Horror is one of the classic old school D&D um, adventures. I think it was featured in in the uh, uh, what was that movie? The one that just came out, uh, Ready Player One. I think they had it on the van. But in the book, they actually even went to the, did the Tomb of Horrors adventure. But this is not. This is different from the published version that's available, because this is the uh, the tournament mode. Let's check it out. And look, look at that. The the artwork is different from the official uh, artwork. It's a little different. Of course, the the official one looks a lot better. But here's where the artwork started, I guess. Illustrated by Tracy Lash. So this is basically just a uh, look at all the old the old original typewriter type that's pretty cool yeah i guess the whole thing is like that it's just trying to find the artwork okay here's some here's the old artwork here's some maps so you'll notice as because Dungeons and Dragons, the uh, their company was called TSR. I think it was called Tactical Studies and Rules, and you know they were just a small company. Just started with a couple of people, and you notice you see how amateur the artwork is when they first start out, and then eventually you will see you know just from the modern iteration, you know the uh, the advanced fantasy art that they use now, like the. The, with the high production values. So this just looks like some uh, high school kid movies. This is from uh, I forgot the name of the adventure. Yeah, Keep on the Borderland. Keep on the Borderlands, 1980 by Jim Rosloff. And I think this is the Greyhawk. Uh, yeah, World of Greyhawk by uh, Jeff Easley, 1983. And the Keep on the Borderlands art was 1980. 
I remember this campaign world. We played in that with my friends when we were kids. Now let's see what is this. 1986 by Keith Parkinson. Cover painting for Swords of Deceit. Pretty cool. Is there anything inside? No. And these are all just the bonus stuff here. And this is uh, the interior painting for the uh, second edition player's handbook, 1989 by Larry Elmore. Larry Elmore is one of the most famous fantasy artists. Yeah, these are all just bonus stuff. What's this big thing here? The Forge of Fury 2000 by Todd Lockwood. is one of my favorite cover painting for 1978 player's handbook by Dave Ch by Dave Champier one of my favorite original artists for AD&D I love the artwork he does it's not realistic but it really captures the atmosphere this is one of the most famous paintings ever this is like spoofed so many times just this whole scene here I'm glad they made a, a little poster of this What is this? 2004 by Todd Lockwood. I guess a D and D, a 30th anniversary. See, this is a, a what is it? 2004, so much more modern, refined artwork, higher quality. But look, see, they they spoofed the old image from the uh, from the Dave Trampier art. Pretty cool. Oh, another one from the old uh, books. Fiend Folio, 1981 by Emmanuel. I guess his name is just one word, Emmanuel. I remember this. This is like a... This is basically like a, a, a British monster manual. Well, this is a big poster here. Dungeon Master Screen by Dave Champier in 1979. Ooh. And again, that image again, see? Adventurers looking for gold. Oh, this is awesome. I love the atmosphere he creates. One of my favorite all time old school artists. And what is this guy? Uh, 2016 interior painting for Storm King's Thunder by Chris Rand. So modern painting. Oh, that's really big painting. Where they kill the giant. Okay, so that, that's all the bonus stuff there. So let's take a look at the actual look this is a beast how big is this thing it's a nice case too look at that look how big that case is it's like matte colored so here's the book It's a mimic. It's a tend to be a treasure chest. And here's the how many pages is this? Lots of pages. 438 pages. Wow. So let's speed through this since it's a big book. And what if I just just do it this way? And I'll just do it. I'll just cut it off. Do two pages at a time. Look at this old ad. 
What year is this? It has to be like, uh, it has to be like late seventies. Looks like. I like they had Stranger Things on there because they were playing D and D. Oh, then uh, the Critical Role uh, YouTube YouTube and uh, Twitch channel with Matt Mercer. So I have to go through this quickly because this book is this book is uh, huge. Okay, so this is a uh, original edition first. The original edition of Dungeons and Dragons. And you'll notice the art it's not as refined as the later ones okay they have a bunch of pictures and stuff and the original version was actually uh before it was dnd was called chainmail was was just more like miniatures rules for medieval combat and this art ain't not really too bad though this is actually pretty good i guess because it's a cover so they they spent more time to uh, get a good cover picture A lot of history in here. I'll have to read these one of these days. Inspirations from comic books. Look at that. Some of the uh, ads. Uh, oh, it's kind of like an evolution of the uh, one of the monsters here. Till the modern incarnation. The oldest one versus the newest version here. Bunch of uh, grid maps using graph paper. Tomb of Horrors again, and this is the the iconic design right here. See, there's the old one, and this is the modern one, which is a lot cooler. Okay. The Beholder evolution of that creature <laughs> old ads a severac this old edition they call it the white box because there was just like white you know white uh, booklets paper booklets paperback booklets in it and I don't know if most people know but during the 80s there's the thing called a satanic panic when people thought D&D &D was like um, trying to convert people to Satanism and the old artwork which they changed later because you know they didn't want to uh, have government intervention and try to shut them down it was more occult like you know, look at these old artwork lots of the uh, new artwork is just straight up fantasy but this is like really occult it's like okay are they like sacrifice teaching people how to about ritual sacrifice or whatever so they changed that up a bit Demogorgon, also in Stranger Things. Ooh, Dragon Magazine had the greatest artwork. Their covers were fantastic. I still have a bunch of the old issues just lying in the garage. I have to go a little bit faster. Old ads. That's the same poster I had. And, the, and this is the uh, cover for the old monster manuals. You know, it's nice, but you can tell that it's not really, you know, up to standards with the newer edition. This is like, you know, uh, looks very amateurish. Now we're at the uh, first edition here. See, that's the one I was talking about. See, and these to be called, there were two uh, offshoots of D&D. There is the uh, the basic expert dean expert set, which is called just Dungeons and Dragons, and then one with the hardback manuals. Those were called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, 
And it wasn't until later, until the third edition, I believe, where they just put it all into one rule set. Oh, fantastic artwork again. A bunch of the, uh, th these were the old adventures. How they look like. See, they were just like, um, really, uh, just like two tones, just black ink and with a, another color. These classic adventures. Oh, and here's the, this is the Dungeons Master's Guide for AD&D. &D. Classic drawings again from Dave Trump here. A Paladin in Hell. And this one here is a, a Miracle the Chaotic. That's funny. They also have a bunch of cartoons as well. This is from the uh, the basic edition, I believe, of d, &D. And this is again what I'm talking about, the Satanic Panic. There was a missing student that happened and they blame it on them on uh, uh, RPGs being satanic so they had a lot more devils and demons in, in the old editions again see like what ritual sacrifices and stuff so they had to clean up their image because they didn't want the uh, RPG, RPG industry going under because of uh, angry parents. It's kind of like what happened to the video game industry during the uh, uh, the Columbine massacre because of the video game Doom. And then the video game industry had to police themselves, otherwise they didn't want to get like, you know, regulated by the government. Loth, which is the, uh, the drill. How do you pronounce that? The drow king. Caves of Chaos, another one of the, one of the uh, Keep on the Borderland, one of the original modules. And we notice here that the uh, artwork for the, uh, the covers, that they started re-releasing the same module, but uh, they started making the, redoing the cover. See, look at this, uh, the two-tone cover. And then they started doing full color paintings of the same one. Same with these. Again, see the evolution in the covers. You know, but the uh, I really like the charm of the old artwork though. It looks really creepy. Like, see, this is the Tomb of Horrors artwork. This is 1980s now. Again, Tomb of Horrors. So you get the artwork's getting a little bit better here. Old ads. It's the same poster I had from the Fiend Folio. You see, this is the basic set of Dungeons and Dragons. Miniatures, of course. Hmm. When video games first started getting popular. They had a video game for in television? I didn't know that. Oh, and speaking about the propaganda, there is this, uh, you know, the uh, satanic panic. There is the, uh, this uh, evangelist, Jack Chick. And he would release comics that are like really fundamentalist uh, Christian comics, you know, that would be against, like, you know, all the sins of the time. And, and one of the targets was, was um, RPGs, especially Dungeons and Dragons. And then he released a comic 
on the evils of uh of role playing games and and it was called Dark Dungeons. If you look it up now, I'm trying to find it. In fact, somebody made a video of that, like a, a live action video of the of the uh, of this comic that he made. It's it's really it's really uh it's serious, but looking at it nowadays, you know, you would laugh at it because it's kind of like you know the Reefer Madness uh, mar anti marijuana videos. It's exactly like that, but with anti uh, RPGs. Check it out. I mean, we, we laugh at it now, but, you know, back in those days, that was like a serious issue for them. Some ads. Crash of 1983. I guess there was a video game crash. Notice the artwork. This is second edition Dungeons & Dragons. Look how much better it is now. But I still love the charm of the the older editions, even though the quality, the production values is not as great. They just the just the details and and just the charm of the old artwork. I really like that. So you compare what the newer see in the older version and the newer version. Oh, these are just a different uh, from different languages as well. Animated series. Anybody remember this? The Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. So look at the art. This is for the monster manual. Remember the old one I showed you earlier? That's it. That I said was like really amateurs compared to this one. In Dragonlance, a bunch of novels that were made in the in the D and D universe. Those were really popular back in the day. Dragonlance modules, all the characters, pretty cool. And they started working on other um, campaign roles, like a like Japanese themed roles. Dungeon magazine. Issue number one. Oh, actually, they. I remember now. They released a separate magazine called uh, Dungeon, alongside a uh, Dragon magazine. I guess this was just adventures and stuff. A bunch of old maps. This is uh, the village of Hamlet. One of the first maps on the on the original modules for the game. And then the introduction of the Forgotten Realms, which is like, even now is like one of the most popular campaigns, 1987. So 86 is, was when they uh, made a new campaign setting. So this basically is like the default setting now, I believe, for the D&D uh, universe. Yeah, that's where it started, 1986. See, these are like all famous places. <clears throat> Forgotten Realms, Ruins on the Other Mountain. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most famous characters, Drizzt, one of the uh, f most famous uh, deal wielding uh, drow. And look how he changed over time. 1988 here from that to this look here 1993 and 2007 and then 2012 so this is his modern look the way he is now his first description 1988 a bunch of the video games the old school uh Text adventures mostly. 
Well, there's some graphics for later on. This is second edition Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, this is still, they still call it Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. In my opinion, I think the basic set was better. It was more streamlined. The advanced one have a bunch of rules that weren't really, they're kind of like all, uh, they're not really streamlined. And it, and it just created a lot of uh, work for the dungeon master. The, the, um, the basic and expert edition of Dungeons and Dragons was a lot more streamlined and well thought out in my opinion. But, you know, teach their own. Some people like the, uh, I mean, I played AD&D more than D&D, but just when I look at the old rules back later, just like, uh, you know, just a couple years ago, and I compared it to, because you know what, you know, I think this version, the D&D version actually better than AD&D. In my opinion, of course, you feel, you can feel free to disagree with me. Mind Flayer from the original. To what we have now, Ravenloft. I mean, changes of a uh, dragons from the the original 1974, 1977. You have the red dragon here, and then latest fifth edition, 2014. Dark Sun campaign world. And then we have a uh, Conan. Alright, Salvatore was one of the uh, the biggest art er, excuse me, the biggest uh, authors. He's the guy that made uh, the Dritz uh, character. Gen Con, where it began, when did it start actually? Gary Gygast founded the commission in 1968, wow, that's like, I didn't know it was that old. You notice these, now we're looking at more, uh, modern style artwork see you know see how just the style changes from our you know art fantasy art that most people are used to seeing is just like this stuff in the fall of tsr yeah we all know that tsr was well, uh, their, or at least their assets were taken over by Wizards of the Coast, which is part of Hasbro. So they are no longer, you know, TSR itself is gone. All their assets were transferred for, for all their RPGs. And here's our dice. So when did they start? 1973? Wow, I didn't know they started there. I didn't know it was that old. All the different uh, campaign worlds. Ravenloft, Dragonlance, Spelljammer, Greyhawk Adventures, and Dark Sun. Planescape. I remember this game. This, this is one of the best RPGs ever. And they released a lot of these, uh, like like Baldur's Gate. And they a couple of years ago, they they redid like the game with better uh, UI for modern uh, computers. And also, I believe they released uh, like higher res graphics, so it looks good on modern video cards. Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Two, Planescape Torment.
third edition D and D. I think most people now, I think they're they're most familiar with when D and D third edition came out, uh, probably three point five, and that's how uh, most of the you know the players started out with. This is what, like when D and D was at its height, it was around three point five. And they removed the advanced Dungeons and Dragons versus the Dungeons and Dragons. It just all became just Dungeons and Dragons D and D. Different character classes. Here's the evolution of the orc. Look at that, it's funny. 1974. And the 77th is the one is the funniest. They look like pigmen. And now this is some how we we normally recognize orcs. I actually like the uh, 2008 version better than this this big bulky 2014 version. This looks more like the uh, something out of Lord of the Rings. Oh, look at it here. This is from a. Uh, AD and D first edition. These are all the races. See, look how amateurish the uh, the artwork is here. But you know, it gives you a good indication of uh, the races and size. And most people don't know, but the elf was actually shorter, like pretty short. You, most people are familiar with like Lord of the Rings style elves, where they're basically just the same height as a human. But you know, they're actually a lot smaller. Even like the half orc is smaller than a human. The human is like the most biggest dude. But then when you change to uh, the modern uh, D and D system, they changed it. I think orcs are the biggest now. See, there's just male and female. Orcs are the biggest now. Humans aren't that big in comparison. And then, well, they still have elves a little bit short. This is a half elf, and this is an elf. So it is still a little shorter than humans. But I believe you can choose like a height range, so you can actually make it same size as a human. Because most people, when they portray elves, they they are like the same size as human beings. It's so funny how small these halfling. I think this is. I think it. This is a halfling and that's a gnome, but I could be wrong. And then the big burly dwarf versus like you know this little scrawny dwarf here. He doesn't even look like a dwarf. He needs to be more beefy. I like how they they beefed up the dwarf over here. They released like a Warcraft uh, RPG. Wow, this is the D twenty system. When they start licensing licensing uh, their system out to uh, other people for use, dragons in the third edition. All the different dragons. Look how small the people are. This is kind of like a uh, similar sizes uh, um, Game of Thrones. From third edition D and D, okay, yeah, version three point five. What is this DDM? I'm not sure what that is. The miniatures, of course. The Roper. Like a really chaotic fight scene here. Well, it seems like these a lot of these newer edition artwork, although much higher quality. Well, I think I have a poster of this. See the old uh, this uh, image from the old player's handbook. But it seems to be like more chaotic, and it's hard to tell what's going on. I mean, it's hard to see the theme compared to a lot of the older artists. Like even here, it's just like a bunch of stuff going on, in my opinion. That's why I like the older artwork, although. The quality is not as good, just the the composition 
and the little details they add to the art makes those old ones a lot better that's why people finally remember a lot of the old artwork because of that because you have to remember a lot of the the small the small team they had before they only had a few artists and they basically just did all the artwork and they they you know they they work they worked them to death to uh and i think a lot of the artists quit because of that because you know just to kind of like how video game is video games are nowadays they worked them to death to uh complete all the artwork for the game but it had a uniform feel to it because it's the same artist working in all the products now you know you have like a, i don't know who knows how many tons of artists probably most of them are are um you know like contract work doing the art for them Man, it's just an uh, evolution of artwork in, in games nowadays can't be helped Fourth edition DD now. Fourth edition they changed it to more like a um, as far as the gameplay it was more like more like more of a miniature combat game slash MMO type of like a video game. And a lot of people didn't like that. They preferred like more of a role-playing focused game which they switched up again on in the fifth edition see just comparing these are two treasure chest findings and again this is a lot higher quality you know a lot more time looks like a lot more time spent on it but man look at this this is my favorite artist game dave champier just this image here and just like look at these three grimy Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. The older D and D's, you're you weren't really like a a superhero like nowadays. Like a lot of the newer editions, your character would die fairly easy, and you're pretty much like a you were like a nobody. You're just like like um, they're pretty much like like scoundrels and rogues. And look at these characters. Compare them. These guys don't look like heroes. They look like greedy adventurers. They just looking for treasure. Look at their faces. They, it's like they'll even like backstab each other just to get the treasure like, like this guy in the back is like well, should i kill these two guys they like really real story here see it's like a si similar composition you know you have the like that dead skeleton with a with a sword in them and they did the same thing here with a better quality artwork but you compare the story and this man you can really you can see like i can just I can like come up with like with a, like a big story just thinking about what what these characters did just to come to this point here these greedy adventurers and I mean I, I suppose you can come up with this one too but this image here is a lot more evocative to me but you know I'm really a sucker for the old school art Owl bear, one of the funniest creatures in a uh, in a uh, RPGs. It's an owl and a bear that's crossed. 1975, 1977, and they're like really goofy looking. So now you have like, which is a little more threatening. 2014, 2010, still a funny monster, but still a lot more sinister looking. Even though the concept is funny, owl crossed with a bear. And the famous image again. And they re-released the old, uh, the old uh, first edition with new covers. People want, people wanted to buy the old edition again. This is basic Dungeons and Dragons. I think in the mid eighties, nineteen eighty three. Yeah. maps fifth edition 
And this is the, the modern, this came out uh, four years ago. This is the modern edition now. You'll notice the much higher quality in the artwork here. Well, not much different from 3.5 and 4, but still compared to the old ones, a lot better quality, higher quality artwork. Bunch of adventures. And this is the uh, this is from uh, Ravenloft, nineteen eighty-three, and to what he looks like now. See, before he looked more like Count Dracula in nineteen ninety. Two thousand, even two thousand six, he still looked like Count Dracula. And I guess they changed him up, which I think is better. Twenty sixteen, you know why come. Uh, copy it's not even like Count Dracula himself himself other uh, copying they're they're copying uh, um, What's that guy's name? Uh, Bela Lugosi, you know from the 30s the 1930s uh, Dracula They copied that look. I mean why why keep that might just come up with your own style? So I think the newer version is better in this case. I think the guy that did the uh, cover, what's his name? Uh, is his name Volo? The cover for this this book itself, Volo's Guide to Monsters. No, no, no. The artist's name is Hydro Seventy Four. The one that did like all, all the uh, the graphic design for this book and the cover. I like this one though. This, this is a more modern one, but it tells a story here from the different characters. Like there's like a body here. Uh, what are these? Like, uh, I don't know, like goblins or something? Searching the body. And there's like a cleric, it seems like, with her holy symbol. Like they, she found something. A dwarf presenting a, a sword to the elf for some reason. Maybe he's asking him to identify it. That's a big thing with fantasy artwork, I believe. You should, well, any artwork, but especially fantasy, you should, it should tell a story of what's going on in there so people can use their imagination and try to think what, like, what's, what's the story about? What's this painting about? Look at the city of Waterdeep, how big it is. Wow. And like somebody did the uh, Tomb of Horrors as like a uh, like a 3d map so you can see uh, instead of just, just the regular grid paper they have it like a um, isometric maps so you can see what's going on for the tomb of horrors I need to look at this in more details kind of cool a bunch of potions and stuff I bet you Snape will love these all the dice uh, Tiamat, which is the most famous, uh, the largest dragon in d, d history, I believe he's like a dragon god. And this is from the first edition. And this is Tiamat now, a modern edition of him. This is like a sorcerer uh, summoning him, he'd probably be dead in a second. And it's just like virtual tabletops for playing uh, RPGs on a computer with others online. And then Critical Role, check out this series if you you know you want to watch. If you're not sure what D and D is about, check out these guys. They're they're all voice actors, and they play D and D. And it's just like a funny uh, uh, a funny advertisement because they make it look like you know like like the old school '70s ads, like the one I showed you at the beginning, guy with the overalls. But uh, yeah, they're all voice actors, so they really, you know, the way they play the characters is really well done. And he, he's like, Matt Mercer is an excellent DM. So if you don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is or RPGs are, check out Critical, Critical Role on YouTube or, or Twitch and just watch their shows. Highly recommended. Adventure Castle? Wow. And a bunch of all the. Uh, 
all the covers for the original, all the books from the paperbacks to uh, AD&E first edition. Oh, but the, no uh, covers for the uh, for the basic and expert set. They should show those too. But uh, yeah, but going for the second edition, third edition, three point five, I believe, and fourth, and then fifth edition. Yeah. that's everything and it's a really big book and it's like a long video but I wanted to show everything in here all right everybody that's it hope you like the tour until next time bye